Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Mastering SAP Analytics Cloud and SAP Datasphere. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of the updates. In today's video, we are diving into a very critical topic. We're going to take a look at the different modeling asset types that you can have in SAP Datasphere. Whether you're just getting started or you're looking to refine your knowledge on SAP Datasphere, this video will show you a clear understanding of the different key asset types that you can use and their different use cases. And at the end, I will show you how these things compare with your existing knowledge on SAP BW. So let's jump right into it. Modeling assets in SAP Datasphere are fundamental building blocks that help you structure your data. Think of them as the backbone of your data models. There are several different asset types in SAP Datasphere. Each is designed for a very specific purpose. Today, we're going to focus on the five core elements, the entity relationship model, local and remote tables, graphical views, SQL views, and the analytical model. Basically, we're focusing on the assets that you create in the data builder. In the entity relationship model, you can define the relationships between your tables, your views once, and then any future steps in your modeling will leverage those definitions and you don't have to repeat that. So you also have the ability to import and export the entity relationship model as an external file which can be very helpful in projects as it actually contains the complete definition of all the tables and you can quickly import and export it between systems or spaces. The table in SAP Datasphere is probably the most fundamental asset you have. You have the option to have a local table that you create in SAP Datasphere or you can have a remote table that is being generated based on the definition in your data source, for example, based on a CDS view in S4. As part of the table definition, you also can add additional information, such as a business owner or a team that is responsible for it, which then is available in the repository explorer, and you can search on that. You also have the option to use the data editor, which allows you to edit or add data directly within SAP Datasphere for that table. Now coming to the views, and this is probably going to become one of your most asset types that you will be using, because the view is the basis for your dimensions, for text, for hierarchies, analytical and relational data sets, and the fact view. Please remember that the analytical data set has been deprecated. You should not be using it anymore and you should be using the fact view instead. Within the view, you have the option to set up things like union and aggregation. You can define the joins. You create the projections where you can rename objects. You can rename descriptions and you can set up also calculated columns and also the geographic enrichment for using maps in SAP Analytics Cloud. The fact model is pretty much like a star schema model. So you can bring in together your transactional data, you bring in your dimensions and form of associations, and it is the basis for the analytical model. The analytical model is the entry point for SAP Analytics Cloud. This is the model where you're going to set up dimensions and measures and what you want to expose to your end users. You can create restricted and calculated key figures, variables, exception aggregation, and it's pretty much the model that is able to resolve time dependency, for example, for a hierarchy. So now putting everything together. At the base level, we have the local table and the remote table. 
Based on those, we can then create dimensions, text views for items like product names and our hierarchies. The next step is the fact model, where we're combining our transactional data with the views from the previous step. And finally, the analytical model, which is then exposed to SAP Analytics Cloud, or as you can see also to other external tools using OData or ODBC, JDBC interfaces. Now, last but not least, as promised, a quick view on how these elements compare with good old BW objects. So your info object is basically like setting up a table and creating a dimension view or a text view for the member descriptions. Looking at the info provider or a composite provider level, that's like setting up a fact view with all the associations to the dimensions. Your Bex query would be similar to the analytical model with variables, restricted key figures, calculated key figures. To wrap things up, SAP Datasphere provides you with multiple modeling asset types. Whether you're working with a simple table or you're building complex analytical models, understanding these different asset types will help you make the most out of your SAP Datasphere model. What assets are you using most in your projects? Perhaps you want to share it. Let me know in the comments and what is your experience with it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it. And if you wanna stay updated on all things Datasphere and SAP Analytics Cloud, hit that notification bell. See you in the next video.